be more active, and that's why I have problems with my chain. Okay, well, let's look at lesson 7.7, .7, which is exponential growth and decay. It's also the last lesson in your notes packet, I believe, which means last lesson in the chapter. So we'll see how things go. I was thinking chapter test on Friday. We'll see. Let's see. Lily comes back. Lily comes back on Friday. And then hopefully Mikhailie will be back tomorrow. So we'll see. Okay, so exponential growth and decay. We have been working with exponents and exponent equations. And exponential growth and decay is when something is either what growing real fast or yeah. shrinking, decaying real fast. Now there is an equation here. Exponential growth can be modeled by the function y equals a times b to the x. So like we talked about the other day, the x has to be in the exponent for this. a has to be greater than 0, and b has to be greater than 1. Now, I can't remember. I'm confusing my algebra classes to remember what they ask. But um, base the base b, so the part that goes with the exponent, is what is called the growth factor. And it is traditionally 1 plus the percent rate of change expressed as a decimal. And we will practice that. We'll look at that down in these examples. So, hmm, it was showing right when I edited it. And then when I copied it, it got off. Okay, so this is supposed to say that the initial amount is A right here. My arrows got off when it printed for whatever reason. Um, B is the base or the growth factor. If it's a growth factor, it's always greater than 1 because it's 1 plus the growth. And then the exponent is X. And the exponent is traditionally the number of years. Okay, so that's the equation that we're going to be using as we go through this. So let's go ahead and look at our first growth example and see if we can figure out how to fill things in. Suppose the population of a town was 25,000 people in the year 2000. If the population grows about 1.5% each year, what will the approximate population be in 2025? Okay, now you just comment, that's in four years. That's good to know. We're going to need that for this problem. So the equation we're using is that y equals a times b to the x. Let's talk about that. Oh, you talked about in four years, which is four years from now. I see what you're saying. But what do we know about the years and the problem? Okay, so 1.5% each year, which when we do an equation like this, how do we express a percent as a decimal? Yeah, because we take the decimal. Well, if it's 1.5 percent, not okay. Point. Okay, there we go. So if we move, basically, it's moving the decimal two places left. Yes. Yeah. And so that's going to we're going to use. 0 0.015. Remember, anytime we move a percent to a decimal, we use two left. So we're going to use that 0 0.015. And that's one of the pieces of information. That's going to go as part of our growth. Now, how many years does this problem span? Okay, yeah. yeah. Going from current, four years, but we're not talking current. We're talking about they want to know in 2025, it originally started in year 2000, so 2025 minus 2000 is going to be a time span of 25 years. So that's going to go in when we talk about years. And then what's the other information they gave us? Okay, the town population was 25,000. 
So that is the amount of people at the beginning of this problem. Or in other words, that is the initial amount. And if you look back up here, initial amount goes in place of A. And so this 25,000 is going to be my A value. Okay? So, we're going to fill this in. I'm going to leave it as Y equals A, the initial amount. What did I just say A was going to be? 25,000. 25, then it's times B. And if you look back up here, what did it say B? Base or growth factor. Greater than 1, it says to do 1 plus the percent as a decimal. So that means I'm going to do 1 plus, what was my percent as a decimal? 0 .0. Yeah, 0 0.015. And that's going to be raised to the power of x. And x is the exponent, which represents the number of years. And so my number of years that we're going to put in is 25. Now, for the most part, this is a calculator problem. There's one small cleanup we can do, and that is in the parentheses. So I can say 25,000 times, when we add these, 1 plus 0 0.015 is going to be 1.015 raised to the power of 25. This is why I had you grab a calculator, right? Because mm -hmm. we're not doing this in our heads. Now, do you know how to enter this on the calculator? Yeah. Okay, well, let me show you together. I'm going to demonstrate on the, the TI-30X2S, which if you're using one of mine, that's what you're going to use. Girls, if you're listening to this recording and you have a different calculator, I can help you when you get back to class, or you can try and figure it out and play around some. Um, most scientific calculators, you can go ahead and plug it all in at once, and that's what we can do. But technically, if we want to follow order of operations, officially we should do the exponents first, and then the multiplication. Now, on these calculators, I can do it all at once. So, I can do 25,000 times... Then my next part is 1.015. And then my exponent key is this little arrow guy right over here. So I'm going to say exponent. And it's going to be to the 25th power. And at that point, I can hit equals. You did it right on your calculator. If your answer matches my answer. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So I put that in the calculator. 36,273.63385. What does this number represent? Amount of, people. amount of people. So should we give a decimal for the amount of people? I mean, can we have a 0.6 of a person? Now, I would say go ahead and say 36,270, 6 cells of 3 to go up, so 36,274, and that is people. Okay. Okay, try the second one. Suppose the population of deer in a region was 3,500 in the year 2000. Since then, the population has grown by 3% annually. What will the approximate population be in the year 2020?
Okay. Thoughts on what you know? Okay. And what's that going to go in for? Yep. Yep. They told us the initial amount of deer was 3,500. And so when we do A times B to the X, A will be 3,500. Okay. What else did they tell me? Okay, 3%. What do we know about 3%? Well, but how do we use it in this type of equation? Yeah, 3% needs to change to a decimal. So I'm going to take the decimal, which is right at the end of 3, and move it to left. And so we're going to use this as, yep, 0 0.03. And what else do I know? The, the years of sparring, I think, are to be from 2000. Okay. So it started in year 2000, and they're asking us for year 2020. 20 years. Yeah, so 2020 minus 2000 is going to be 20 years. Okay, so... I already put in 3,500 for A. For B, remember it's 1, and since it's growing, we're going to say 1 plus the decimal. So 1 plus 0 0.03 raised to the power of time, which is 20. I like to clean this up before I put it in the calculator. 3,500 times 1 plus, nope. Instead of 1 plus, what was I trying to write? What is 1 plus 0 0.03? 0 1.03 raised to the 20th. Excuse me. So, you can enter it all at once like I did last time. If you'd prefer, because officially multiplication should happen first, or excuse me, exponent should happen before multiplication, you could do 1.03 raised to the 20th. Just make sure if you do that, you hit equals, and then multiply that by 3,500. Yep. So, y comes out to be 6, whoops, I wrote down the wrong number. 6,321.389321. This time we are talking about what? Population of deer. So, again, should we have... A decimal of deer? No. 6,321 deer is how I'm going to leave this. Okay. Okay, before we flip to the back side... There's some information about compound interest. So compound interest is another example of growth. Um, you know what interest is? Yeah. Okay. So when the bank pays interest on both the principal and the interest, then an account is already earned. That's compound interest. So it's paying interest on what everything you have in there. It's an example of exponential growth. Excuse me. I got a yawn in the middle of that. And here's your equation set up. Okay. A, which is the total amount in the account, equals P, 
which notice P stands for the principal, kind of like initial value on the last problems. R is the annual interest rate. Just make sure you use it as a decimal. N is the number of times interest is compounded per year. So like if it says quarterly, that's four times a year. Annually is once a year. Semi-annually is twice a year. So on and so forth. And then T is the time in years. Okay, let's see what we have in the way of examples back here. So, I don't know about you, but notice it's compound interest, right? First thing first, I'm going to write down the equation we just talked about. A equals P times 1 plus R over N raised to the NT. So Michelle invests $8,000 in a money market account that pays 3% interest compounded quarterly. How much will be in the account after 12 years? Okay. Got any information that's going to tell us anything? Okay. Okay. So what's that 800 going in for? Right, but that's your initial amount. So that's what we're going to call our principal. Okay, it's what you start with, so it's the amount you initially invest. Okay, 3%. What's 3% tell me? The decimal. And so the decimal of 3% is... Okay, so 0 0.03, and that is our value. Okay, what else? Okay, so 12 is going to go in place of, oh, but 12 years is a time, so T for time. There's one other thing we need to know. It's compounded quarterly. If something happens quarterly, how, many, how often does that happen? Well, how many, if something's broken up into quarters, how many pieces is it broken up into? Right. So if I, you know, if we break something up into quarters, we break it up into fourths. Yeah. And so that's how often this is compounded. So we're going to say n is four. Yes, I know. There's been a bug crawling around all day. I think it's just making the rounds around my room. Okay. So we have all of our information. Let's put it in the formula. So I'm going to write it all out. A equals P. What was P? 8,000. 1 plus R, 0 0.03, divided by N, which is 4, raised to the NT. So 4 times 12. Okay, that's kind of the basic setup that you're going to have to have to do this problem. From here, I don't know, I would take pieces before I put it in the calculator. 8,000. What is 0 0.03 divided by 4? This is where I say grab the calculator. Point zero three divided by four is point except it's zero zero seven five. Did you get that? Yeah. And then it's gonna be raised to the four times twelve power. What's four times twelve? Forty eight. So I would clean up those things, and there's one other thing I would clean up, and that is inside the parentheses. It's eight thousand. 
but then 1 plus 0 0.0075, 1.0075 raised to the 48th. And that's where I would grab the calculator. 8,000 is 1.0075 raised to the power of 48. See if your answer matches my answer. Yeah. 11451.24267. Okay. How do we express this answer? Well, what kind of decimal? How much account will be how much will be in the account after 12 years? What's this answer labeled in terms of? Well, it is happening quarterly, but it's how much will be in the account after 12 years? How much what? Okay, but what is the interest? You're missing the obvious of what I'm looking for. It's all amount of... Money? Oh, yeah. yeah, it started with $8,000. We're earning this interest. So this 11451 is going to be money. money. So $11,451. And we want dollars and cents. So I did because it's money. I did decimal, two decimal places. So $11,451.24. Okay. Example two, compound interest. It just gives you the basics. You don't have to stress about trying to figure it all out. Again, we're using that same formula. What's 12,000 going to go in for? Yeah, so it's the principal, so we're going to put it in place of P. What about 4.8%? What do I do with that? That's the interest. Move the decimal over two, and that makes it 0 0.048, and that is going to be the R value compounded annually. How often does annually happen? How many times a year? Once a year. That's going to tell me N is 1. After 7 years tells me T is 7. Okay. Set up your formula. A equals P, which is 12,000, times 1 plus R over N. Point zero, oops, point zero four eight divided by one raised to the power of nt, which is one times seven. Okay, I see the twelve thousand. One plus point four zero four eight over one. Well, point zero four eight over one is just gonna be point zero four eight added to one. One point zero four eight raised to the power of one times seven, though, yeah. which is seven. Okay. Put it in the calculator if you have it. I did 12,000 times 1.048 raised to the seventh, which 
Did you get it? Okay. So again, we're talking interest, so we're talking money. $16,661 and 35 cents. Okay. So that was compound interest, another form of growth. What have we not talked about yet today? Decay. So we're going to talk about decay now. The difference is we're talking about a decay factor. And it is 1 minus the percent rate of change expressed as a decimal. Okay. We've got our initial amount still, our X point with the number of years, and our base or growth factor. So basically the difference is for decay, we subtract instead of add. Okay. Let's look at example one. Population of New Haven was 148,220. That was in 2005. Since then, the population has been decreasing at an annual rate of 3%. If this rate continues, what will be the population in the year 2015? Okay. Huh? They are older. Because I used them previously. So. Yeah, when it says when will the population... Well, I feel like 20... I feel like it was right around 2015 when I made them. So. Okay, what information can you tell me here? Okay, so 148,220, our initial amount of... A, yeah, National Amount of People, which will go in for A. 2005 is the beginning. 2015 is the end. So what do you know from 2015 to 2005? 10 years. And 10 years will go in place of X. Notice the population is decreasing at a rate of 3%. What do we know about 3%? 0.03. Okay. I'm going to use that same setup. Y equals A times B to the X. A, initial value, 148. 148,220 times 1. This time it's decreasing. So for decreasing, the big difference is minus. And it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.03, the percent, raised to the power of how many years? 10. If I clean this up a little bit, 148,220 times point, what is 1 minus point zero 0.03? Think 100 minus 3. 97, though. Point nine seven raised to the 10th. So plug it in the calculator. 148,220 times 0.97 raised to the 10th. Does your answer match my answer? Yeah, 109,301.0041. This again is population, right? Yep. So I'm going to go whole number, 109,301. 
and that is going to be people. Well, depends on how big the place is, I guess. Okay, last one. A business purchases a computer system for $3,000. The value of the system does what? Decreases at a rate of 15% per year. How much is a computer worth after four years? So if it's decreasing 15%, what do we know about 15%? That's zero. Yeah, and as a decimal? 0.15. They purchased the computer system for 3,000. Where's that 3,000 go? Mm -hmm. Let's see, decreases, which tells me we're going to subtract. And how much is it worth after four years? So that is my my X, so to speak. I started to say T, but there's no T's in this problem. So Y equals A. What's my A value? Times one. This is decreasing, so I'm going to say minus 0.15 raised to the power of four. One minus point one five. No. If you think one hundred minus fifteen. Uh huh. Point eight five raised to the fourth. Last time, put it in the calculator. Thirty thousand times point eight five raised to the fourth. So I have the answer of 15,660.01875. Give me a final answer there. Okay. 1,566.02. Okay. The homework is in Math Excel, of course. Lesson 7.7. .7. Okay. Make sure you get that done for tomorrow.